Hello there, it's been a long time, but I thought we could have a bit of a Glossier catch up. Quite a lot's happened with the brand in the last few years, leading right up to the last couple of weeks when out of nowhere, Glossier suddenly started shipping internationally. Nine years later, never thought I'd see the day. To put it in perspective, Glossier launched the same month Taylor Swift released 1989, and we have lived so many lives since then. Glossier reviews were how my channel began six years ago and how many of you found me. We've come a long way, but a lot of you are still here. And even though we might not be as engaged with Glossier or feel the same way. Once upon a time, it was definitely everyone's beauty Roman Empire. It's still part of the landscape, even as that landscape's changed around it. So this is slightly different for me. Part YouTube video, part podcast almost, because we've got a bit to cover. I say we because even though I'll be the one rambling to some archival footage from my old Glossier reviews, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and how your relationship with the brand looks these days, your reaction to the international shipping news, and if you've read the new book Glossy about the brand and founder Emily Weiss. Very intrigued. I'm heading to the US in a couple of months and plan to get reacquainted with Glossier, but it feels a bit like running into an old flame because my relationship with the brand has changed over time. And as a quick customer turned content creator disclaimer, I've never worked on a paid partnership with them, was never a rep, not part of the new affiliate program, no ties, just a former Glossier groupie who will leave many past reviews linked below, as well as my nail polish shades in all of these clips. What was once a buy every new launch level love affair for me hit a rough patch in recent years. I think Glossier's grasp on millennial pink mines and its grip on my own top shelf started to slip due to a number of issues I'll touch on and also because the industry was growing. Think about some of the brands that launched since Glossier began in 2014. Rare Beauty, Fenty Beauty, Lisa Eldridge, Violette FR, Kosas, Say, Merit, just to name a few. None of those existed when Glossier started. They don't all tick the same box. Merit certainly does in a great grown-up Glossier sort of way, big fan, but it just shows how many more options are out there. Brands that did partner with retailers sooner, did ship internationally without taking nine years. The fresh-faced, minimal makeup traits that made Glossier stand out in 2014 are shared by so many other faces in the brand crowd now. Then there are good and bad news stories over the years. The biggest headline, diversity and inclusion issues came to light in 2020 when a group of former retail employees out of the gloss shared their concerns and poor experiences at the company. A new retail employee strategy was eventually developed as well as the brand making a $10 million commitment to equity, inclusion and representation. Part of that was their $1 million donation in 2020 between Black Lives Matter and their own grant program for black owned beauty businesses that they set up and still operates today in the US and UK. But once people started taking off their baby pink rose-colored glasses, we realized the brand's inclusive imagery hadn't been mirrored by their shade ranges that stayed stuck on five skin tints for years, for example. A color product development team was introduced, who I assume worked on the really recent stretch foundation and concealer launch with 32 shades. But in 2021, the four bronzer tones released copped a lot of flack. Some other news items, the rise and fall of Glossier Play, rest in peace colour slide and vinyl lip lip, I'll never forget you, sustainability questions around the glitter shadows, packaging, stickers and famous pink pouches. In January last year, a third of their corporate staff, 80 employees, were laid off. Then in May, founder Emily Weiss stepped down as CEO. In February this year, the brand took a real retail leap, launching at Sephora, US, Canada and the UK. A win for wider access that I never expected but they reformulated several products to satisfy Sephora's clean beauty criteria, which is a chatty video for another time, given there are no set definitions in the quote clean beauty world. I've been disconnected from a lot of Glossier discourse, but I did see the reformulated Balm.com backlash, didn't know about Milky Jelly or Priming Moisturizer Rich changing until someone told me recently, and still don't know exactly what else was adjusted. I don't know, changing some of your most popular formulas just to get a green tick and now loyal customers loathe the new versions doesn't feel like a great idea. When those diversity issues came to light, I stopped filming my regular Glossier videos. They were by no means the only brand under the microscope and have since made a lot of changes, but I think Glossier is generally and maybe fairly held to a higher standard because of their own messaging and brand identity. And customers have higher expectations because they care. There was this sweatshirt wearing, pink pouch carrying sense of community like no other. People really cared about international shipping too. And suddenly two weeks ago, it just 
fell out of the sky. I gave up hope years ago because they'd gone so far beyond, can only get this in a few countries, hype building in the early years. It was late, not sorry on my way when you haven't left the house yet late, nine years. Again, Taylor Swift released six albums in that time. We gotta pick up the pace here. It does feel like a missed opportunity for Glossier global domination. Imagine this happening years earlier at the height of their hype. Now, maybe past the peak of their powers. But they finally got there, 180 countries to choose from. For Aussies, 16 Australian dollars for shipping in four to six business days. Doesn't feel too bad. Lisa Eldridge's is closer to $30 for five to seven days, for example. Don't really love that prices are 20% higher than the US though. I'm not talking currency conversion. They're about 20 to 25% higher on top of what the conversion works out to. So boy brow, 18 US dollars, should be about 28 Australian, it's 35. But judging by my DMs, lots of people are still really excited about this news and there are still products I enjoy. If you're interested in my most repurchased formulas as a customer for eight years, an updated favorites video or mini reviews of their best sellers to help you navigate the range, please let me know. But there would also be a lot of beauty lovers who aren't as wowed as they once were and moved on to other things. Also happy to share a video on a lot of product swaps I've made or formulas I prefer. Leave me a comment if that would be helpful. I'm interested to see what the brand can do to truly grab people's attention again. New CEO, new era, certainly new strategies, beginning with the big Sephora and shipping steps. What do you think they should do to hoist up the hype again? I'd love to hear where all of you watching fall on the Glossier fan gradient. Did you never stop obsessing or never got into it at all? I'm sure there'll be answers with international shipping impatience, diversity disappointment, not loving new launches, frustrated by formula changes, maybe all of the above. Let me know if any of their products still count as holy grails for you, any unsung heroes, justice for afterbalm, or what you enjoy using instead these days. Looking forward to having a chat with you in the comments as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time.